Welcome back. So we're moving on to capturing the relationships, the friendships between users. So we're talking about followers or followings or however we want to term this. I just refer to it as follows, but it's not really a great term either. <laughs> but basically, how do we capture the data when I follow another user and they may or may not follow me back? It doesn't matter. I'm still able to follow them. And that's all we need to capture is this one-way relationship. And the easiest way to do it is with a single table that we'll call follows. And all that it is is two user IDs. So both of these are primary, excuse me, both of them are foreign keys referring to a user ID. A different user ID that's important. We can't have a user follow him or herself. So they're different IDs. Um, and I called them follower ID and followee ID. You could do, you know, user one ID and user two ID, but the idea here is that you can tell who is following who, that the follower is the person following the followee. It's a nightmare to try and discuss here. So let me give you an example. Here's our table of users. So we have three users, Tommy, Blue Cat, and Cold Steel. And they have an ID of one, two, and three respectively. Okay. So here's our follows table. And the first thing, let's say that Colt, me, decides to follow blue. So that means, you know, follower ID is three, follower being me, the follower, who am I following? Two, blue, the followee. But she doesn't have to follow me back. And she doesn't follow me back, at least not yet. If you look next, I'm following user ID of one, which is Tommy. Speaking of blue, yes, okay, let's see, where was I? So I, with user ID three, follow Tommy, okay. And then you can see now blue, whose user ID is two, finally follows me back. She decides I'm a good owner and she wants to follow me on Instagram. But the key thing here is that it's a one-way relationship. You know, here we have, I'm following Tommy, but Tommy does not follow me. And this is all we need, the, the structure, to encode that information. Um, a couple points we should make, that these are both foreign keys created at. It's just good to know um, if you want to keep track of, you know, when people are being followed. Again, not essential, but it's something that Instagram definitely is tracking, you know, friendship date or something. Uh, and then also, we don't want to have duplicated, you know, follows. So I don't want to be able to follow blue again. So we need to enforce that these are unique, the combination of these two in an order. So as you can see, you know, three and two is here and we can have two and three, but we can't have another three and two. Okay, so let's get to it. We've got follow ID, follow ID, and created at. And we won't be needing a primary key ID or an ID integer that is a primary key because we won't be referencing these friendships or follows anywhere. So create table follows. If you have a better name, feel free to use that. And the first thing we have is our follower ID and our follow E ID and then created at. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's start with created at timestamp default now. Perfect. Then we've got follower ID and follow E ID are both integers. We don't want them to be null. Just copy that on over. Put our commas there. And now we also need to uh, officially declare these as foreign keys. So that would be foreign key follower ID references user users ID. And we can just duplicate that line and just change follow E ID. It also references users ID. And then the last thing, as I mentioned, is we want to enforce that you can only have one of a given relationship. So if user ID one is following user ID two, that cannot that can only be in the database once, but user ID two can follow user ID one. Anyway, so to do that, it's just a matter of primary key. And the order that we actually put them in here won't really matter. I mean, it makes a difference to MySQL, but for us, it won't matter. Follow E ID. Okay, and so that creates the table for us. Let's just check that everything works. Looks good. Let's do a describe follows. 
Good? All right. So just like the last couple of videos, we're done. Um, if you want, stick around and I'll play around with some data and show you that this primary key constraint is working. Okay. So if you're still here, let's try doing an insert into follows and we'll have our follower ID first and then our followee ID. Gosh, it starts to just sound like gibberish after saying it enough times. So let's say that we start off, we've got these three users, right? So blue follows Charlie Brown. So that's going to be one comma two. And we'll also have blue follow me. So that's one comma three. And then let's say I also follow blue back. So that is three comma one. And then let's say that, who do we have? Charlie Brown follows blue Let's say Charlie Brown follows me. So that's two comma three. Okay. Let's try inserting them. Looks like it works. You can do, you know, select star from users, excuse me, from follows. Great. We have follower ID, follow we ID and create it at. And then the true test is if I try and reinsert a relationship, like insert into follows, getting sick of this follower ID, follow we stuff, we're almost done. So let's say try and insert uh, this friendship one comma two. So that is blue following or let's do one comma three. It's blue following me. She loves me so much. She wants to follow me again. If we try and do that, it's a duplicate entry. But as we saw, you can see here, we already have three comma one. So if I did do, you know, if I do one comma two this time, which we also already have, that's blue following Charlie Brown. It's a duplicate entry. But if I switch the order and do two comma one, that's permitted because we don't have that in here yet. But now, of course, it's a duplicate entry. So the order does matter, right? Who's following who? Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We're moving on now to our final piece, which is tags, hashtags. 